Good morning, everyone. Great to be with you this morning on another sunny, beautiful day. We're in our series, Gems from Isaiah, and there really is some great gems in there, isn't there? I'm in chapter 38 this morning, and to be honest, when I looked at what chapter it was, I didn't have a clue what was in there. So I picked up the Bible and I read it, and I thought, wow, what a great, powerful part of Scripture. We're still following the the life of Hezekiah, well, literally just about following the life of Hezekiah. And it starts with in those days. So which days are they? We, we've been following Hezekiah's life. And while he was the king, the king of Assyria came with a mighty army and he destroyed all the towns and cities in, in Judah. And he came to defeat Jerusalem and he came with arrogance. And people have looked at that in previous vlogs. And it says this because... Um, Isaiah came and he brings word from God and says, Hezekiah, because you prayed, God's going to defend this city. God's going to deliver this city. And we know what happened. 185,000 soldiers were killed. So it's like a parallel event of what's going on. It says, in those days, Hezekiah became ill and he's at the point of death. He was in ill. He was in bed. He was at the point of death. Things were not going very well. And then the prophet comes in. Isaiah, the man who hears from God accurately, the man who has a word from God, who knows and he hears direct from God. He's a prophet and he says this. The Lord says, put your house in order because you are not going to because you are going to die. You will not recover. Ugh. What terrible news that Hezekiah receives. It's not the news that he wanted to hear of the man who hears from God. Devastating. How would, how would you react? Hezekiah is 39 in the prime of his life. How would you react to such devastating news? How would I react to such terrible, bad news? Would we get cross with God and say, why God? Why, why now? Why, why me? Why is my life being cut short? All so relevant questions to ask God and God's got broad shoulders. We can say anything to him. Another perspective that one commentary was discussing was Hezekiah has been given an opportunity to put his house in order. He's got, we never know when our day is up, when our number is called, but Hezekiah has got an opportunity to put things right around him with all the people that he needs to put things right with before he meets God. Life goes quick, doesn't it? And we need to, we need to make the most of it. We need to make the most of our time on earth. And some people will think, well, let's go and have a wild, a wild time and get really drunk and do all the things that you think are the best things to do. But actually, it's about making the most of our time, um, living for God, serving him whilst there is time. God wants us to walk in abundant life, doesn't he? That's why Jesus came so that we could have life and have it to the full. And we have fullness of life when we live for God, when we serve him, when we make our lives an offering to to serve him with all the, the gifts and everything that God has given us. How does Hezekiah react to the news? It tells us in verse two, Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and he prayed to the Lord. He turned his face to God, away from people. He turned his face to a God who answers prayer. And he says this, verse three, remember Lord how I have walked before you faithfully and with wholehearted devotion, and I've done what is good in your eyes. And it says, Hezekiah wept bitterly. It's such a powerful prayer. It's a, it's a prayer from Hezekiah's heart that he just throws everything into God's hands. And he pours out his heart to God. It's short. It's, it's powerful. And Hezekiah's honest prayer, it touched God's heart. And it says that Hezekiah wept bitterly. A serious, wholehearted prayer with tears can touch the heart of God. And I must ask myself, how much do I, how much do we pray with such devotion, with such passion that can touch the heart of God? Hezekiah's prayer did, and he got an instant response. Hezekiah's response is delivered by Isaiah. He's sent back to go back to Hezekiah. And he says this, the Lord says, I have heard your prayers and seen your tears. I will add 15 years to your life. Wow, so Hezekiah's prayers and his tears, they move God's heart. They move God's heart so that he changed his mind. 
I find that so encouraging. Our prayers can change the mind of God. Our prayers can touch his heart so that God can move. Prayer changes things. Prayer changes situations. And I find that so encouraging. Prayer works. What situation do you need God to change in your life? Because as he said here, I have heard your prayers and seen your tears. God knows what you're going through and God can come through. Sometimes we just need to cry out to God with our whole hearts and be honest before him. And God can move. He's the God of the entire universe. It's a prayer of passion, of honesty to God. And we see God's gracious, loving character. He adds 15 years to Hezekiah's life. But he also says, I'm going to defend the city and I'm going to deliver this city. And he, he adds to say, I'm going to send you a sign so that you'll know this is going to happen. And he says that because of your prayers have been heard by God, this sign, the sun, the sun's going to go back on the steps, 10 steps. It's like a sundial in Jerusalem. And God said he's going to show a sign that, that what's good, what I've said is going to happen is going to come true. And it did. The, the, step, the sun went back on the steps and then um, God came through. I just dropped my notes. And this reminds us that we have a God who answers prayers, but we pray to a God who's supernatural, who's all powerful, who's a creative God. He put the sun there in the first place. He sustains it. He keeps it burning and he can, he can spin the earth backwards 10 steps on the sundial. That's easy to God. Nothing is impossible for God. And he can do it when we pray and cry out to him in passion and honesty. When we pray to a great God, we should expect great answers. We have a God who can do immeasurably more than we could ever ask or imagine. But he calls us to intimacy, to, to pray, not just in times of trouble, but through daily living for him, through close relationship and close community with, with God's people. God calls us to live for him. Hezekiah received a wake-up call and he responded in prayer. Maybe the, the pandemic is a wake-up call to you and to me, a wake-up call to the church to, to turn to God in prayer, to seek him, to live for him. If we had the same message could we say, like Hezekiah said, I have lived my life with wholehearted devotion. I've walked before God faithfully. Can, can we say that? Can I say that honestly, that I'm living as a living sacrifice to God? I'm giving all my gifts back to God and living for him whilst there is time. None of us know when our day is up. But Hezekiah received a wake-up call. Perhaps this pandemic is a wake-up call for us to be putting God first to be serving him in these days that could be shorter than we know. Have a great day, everybody, and I'll look forward to seeing you all soon. God bless. Bye-bye.